Hi, I'm Mike Chesworth from Starts at 60. And I'm here today with Rob Lockhart from Westpac. And we're talking about people who have a passion to start something new in retirement. Follow a dream, probably something they've been thinking about in a small business point of view for some time. So if you want to do this and, and you're actually starting to set, set up a small business, whether it be on your, in your home or on the road, what are the benefits to you for doing that, especially in this new retired time of your life? Um, I'm going to say, you know, you're talking about our new retired time of life. Yeah. I don't actually think of it as retirement. Mm. I think of it as my next stage of life. Yep. Okay. And I've left a job somewhere, mm -hmm. but now I've got the opportunity to do something else with my time. Right. We've always got to find something to do with our yep. time um, and feel active and part of the community and operating your own business. It's yeah. just a great way to do that. Yeah. So, um, at that stage, I can do it, but I can do it reduced hours and something that I like to do. Okay. So they're the benefits of it, but are there any pitfalls with starting up a, a small business yourself? <laughs> um, I'm going to say there's always pitfalls mm -hmm. uh, with any business. Um, a lot of them are financial pitfalls, yep. uh, particularly if you go into something that's going to cost you a lot of money to get into. Right. So if you were to buy into a franchise or something mm -hmm. like that, you may have taken your lump sum retirement yep. to help you purchase a franchise. Right. If your franchise doesn't work or your business doesn't work, uh, you may lose all that money. Yeah and be back to just being on the government pension. Right. So you've got to weigh up how much am I willing to, to put in mm. for the risk that I might lose it. Or going back into full-time work, which you didn't or, want to or do. Or going back into full-time right. work, because some businesses yeah, mm. can really take up your time. Okay. Right? <laughs> and so if I've done my planning and I've started a small business and I've got an income stream coming in, how does that impact on other in income streams that I've got today? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to say, Depending on how much you've got coming in, yep. it might mean that you now have to contribute to super again. Uh -huh. So if you've put your current super into a pension phase, so yeah. it's starting to give you an income stream, uh -huh. you might have to start putting some of that back into another super fund. Right. Because okay. you haven't really retired yep. in the face of the, the tax department. So you've got to be careful of that. Okay. Now, if you're just on the government pension, yeah. right, they have thresholds that once you get over for the amount of income you're earning, yeah. um, they start reducing the pension they're going to pay you. So where do I go? Who's who's my first point of advice when I'm going to go through this plan? Okay, I'm always going to say, if you've got an accountant, yep. um, talk to your accountant first. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be the best person to right. talk to. Um, but also, um, give the tax office a call, uh -huh. right? So particularly about your current income streams, yep. what's happening with your super or um, those sort of things. The tax office is there to actually help you. Right. And they'll explain what you've got to do and what you need to have to make this work okay. for you. If you're on the pension, then you need to talk to them about right. hey, what's going Set to happen to your and pension. Yeah. So you know what's happening mm -hmm. there. There are other government sites that uh, are out there that can help you. So there's one, um, oh, the acronym is ABLIS. Mm -hmm. um, you put that in and you'll find it. Yep. But it, it looks at what are all the licenses and registrations that businesses need for different industries right. you go into. Okay. So it's a good place just to go to find all that right. type of type of thing. And, and you, know, you work for Westpac, what about the bank? Um, I always think the bank's a great place to go because mm -hmm. whatever business you go in, you need a bank account just for your business. Yep. Don't mix that with your personal stuff. Right. Right. You mix it up with your personal stuff. Um, it's hard to know how well the business is doing and how well you know you're, you're doing, doing yeah, yeah. yourself. Um, and particularly when it comes to tax time, having Keep them separate, separate makes that a lot easier right. and probably a lot cheaper experience with your accountant. Um, and in particular, if the tax department audits you, hopefully that never happens. But if they did, if it's all mixed up, they're going to probably say, "Well, no, most of that's personal. We're not going yeah. to let you claim it." So right. you need to mix keep it, it apart. Keep it apart. Okay. The other thing is, when you're accepting money from people, yep. a lot of people are using their credit cards these days. Yes. So you'll need what us banks we call it a merchant facility. You probably know it better as an FBOS yep. facility. Yep. So you might need one of those so you can start taking payments from your customers. Fantastic. Um, also, we've got our bankers there who have been uh, dealing with businesses for their whole careers. Right. They're great uh, for advice on what to do. And Westpac also has a thing called the Davidson Institute. Mm -hmm. um, it's a website you can go to. It's got lots of information about how businesses operate financially. So just an educational source to help you out there. So yeah. I suppose when I think about all that, um, it's really good to start following a dream and a passion. There's a lot of opportunities out there. But go and seek the right advice from you know, your account and from the different government departments yeah. and hit the websites because there's a, there's, a, there's a wealth of information there that you can use. Yeah.